sa se deuxième Chanel we. And Jodia, we're going to be talking about Mami Wata, the mother of all mermaids. Now, I've been wanting to do this video ever since that whole debacle came out with Halle Bailey playing the new Little Mermaid. So, yes, it's been quite a while. I just kept pushing it off and forgetting, but we are finally here. So, of course, drop those mermaids and snake emojis down below because we need to run it up, okay? We need to run it up because the moment is finally here. Now, when I started looking into this, I didn't think I was going to find as much information as I did, and I didn't understand how symbolic and important Mami Wata was to the African and just the Black diaspora as a whole. Now, of course, we know that there's different types of Mami Water venerations. Of course, we have La Siren, we have Ayara. We have so many different types of mermaids and just water people and water spirits throughout the world, okay? And it's just so interesting because I need you guys to understand as you watch the video, whether you think that mermaids or water spirits or voodoo as a whole is, you know, demonic or you think it's positive, the whole La Siren, Mami Water, River Mama type of situation, water spirits, okay, are very, very important to black people, the black diaspora. Since slavery, since before slavery, they are a very, very important, significant spirit for the black people. Very important veneration. They are a spirit that helped black people when they came to all of these other first world countries. They are a spirit that helped the slaves throughout slavery, out all of their revolutions. So when you hear about Mami Wata, right? Mami Wata is often known as a capitalist spirit. She's known for wealth, health, as well as fertility for the most part. And of course, if you haven't already picked it up, her name translates to Mother Water. She's mostly known for giving people an abundance of money, love, happiness, and overall a very, very good life if you do what you're told and you are basically really good to her. But of course, we've also heard all of those really, really bad stories of people getting kidnapped and killed and what have you, which I'm pretty sure I've talked about at length, but more so on the Haitian side of the La Silen, Met Glo, um, I've even talked about River Mama. So I don't think we're really going to get too much into that because for the most part, most of the mermaid stories are very much so the same and they pretty much go the same for Mami Wata. Like they all kind of have the same MO, some of them sing, some of them don't, some of them are depicted as a whale, some of them are depicted as a snake, some of them are depicted as mermaids, whatever the case may be. But when it comes to Mami Wata, Mami Wata does not necessarily have an aquatic history. So Mami Wata, for the most part, was not always known to be a mermaid. And when you usually look up Mami Wata, she's depicted as a snake, right? And not necessarily a mermaid, even though most of the time she is depicted as a mermaid and most of the time she does reside in the sea. It's very, very complicated and it really depends on who you ask, what culture we're talking about. It's a lot. And even when we're talking about who she's necessarily synced with, it's a lot going on. And most of the time, Mommy Water is female but can also be male, depending again who you're talking to, what culture we're, we're referring to, because it's a lot. So, of course, Mommy Water to Haitians is La Siren, but can also be Simbi. Simbi is a snake. So, most of the time, when you're thinking Mommy Water for Haitians, you would most notably think La Siren, but can also be Simbi. But then sometimes, when you're thinking La Siren, La Siren is sometimes synced with Urzali. So, it's like, it, y'all, it's a lot. You gotta get into the logistics, but we're only human, and the only people that actually know everything that has to do with this stuff are the people that Mami Water lets know about these things. You know, Lassie Rent lets know about these things. You would never fully understand or fully know these things unless they want you to know the depths of the water, the depths of the sea. How much do us humans really know about the water? There's only so much that we know and there's a reason for that. They don't want us to know. That's why we haven't been able to explore that much of the water, both spiritually and physically. There's a reason for that. They don't want us to. So moving 
moving on. Like I said, there's been so much about Mami Wata that I was able to find it. I was like, oh my god, like this is so interesting. So when I was looking into Mami Wata, I had saw that there were slaves that were practicing and worshiping Mami Wata since way back, about the 1700s. Okay, worshiping Mami Wata. There were people documenting this in their journals because you know there was no Instagram, TikTok, you know, shade room, all of that. So they had to write it down. So I'm gonna read this from an excerpt and I was shook. So in Dutch Guyana, the spirit appears in the 1740s in the journal of an anonymous colonist, okay? And it says, it sometimes happens that one or the other of the black slaves either imagines truthfully or out of rascality pretends to have seen or heard an apparition or ghost, which they call water mama, which ghosts would have ordered them to not work on such or such a day, but to spend it as a holy day offering with blood of a white hen to sprinkle this or that at the water side and more of that monkey business. Adding in such cases that if they do not obey this order, shortly water mama will make their child or husband etc die or harm them otherwise. This is the 1700s, okay 1740s. So what is all this? shit water mama was out here with them and this is not the first time or the first type of journal excerpt that we heard of slaves you know worshiping um like certain types of deities or loa or orishas in you know practice now understand i i have to basically iterate this for you guys because i realized i never made a dedicated video about this and i'm shocked i haven't but i have said this numerous times in other videos i'm gonna have to make a dedicated video when you serve a loa right a lot of times we say worship but sometimes we say serve sometimes we say dedicate whatever the case may be understand this is not a substitute for god people who practice voodoo people who choose to lead their life in the way of you know the voodoo practices or whatever the case may be they do believe in god they still worship god however they still choose to follow the law just like how catholics they believe in god they still believe in the saints it's the same concept the law not substitute God in any way shape or form the loi do not take any bit of importance over God I just have to reiterate that because a lot of people think that oh if you're a voodoo practitioner that means you don't believe in God it means you worship the devil and you believe in the loi the loi are the only important things there's no room for God in your life that's not how that works they believe in God okay they believe in mon dieu that's it it's a common misconception that they don't believe in God and I'm tired of having to explain that all the time I'm going to have to make a dedicated video about it so people can understand this because very important to understand so when it came to the slaves right I've also talked about this before in a video that I made about the similarities between Christianity and voodoo that when it came to Haitians especially and of course American slaves and other African type of religions and just anybody right anybody who was enslaved they still want to keep their religion let's be real they did not want to believe in Christianity it was slap onto many of them sure there was some people that did already believe in Christianity but let's be real it was a very small percentage a lot of these people who came from Africa had their own religions and a lot of that was voodoo okay a lot of them came with their papa legba okay a lot of them came with their stuff right so when a lot of them were being thrown the bible they were like okay yeah we're, we're gonna read the bible but at the end of the day we're still gonna serve our shit so what did they do they served their loa in secret so they synchronized the saints or whatever it was that they were given to study with the loa and then whatever the case may be you guys can walk um, the video that I did on this I, I talked about it at length I'm not gonna go too much into detail so I'm very sure that when they were getting possessed and things like that and still practicing their voodoo situation things like this were captured and that's another thing I do have to reiterate you guys were like wait possession that's demonic no 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 that's something that a lot of people need to also understand mainstream media has made possession seem to be demonic and problematic no possession is also something that happens a lot in voodoo and and other religion that a lot of people seem to not understand what is the Holy Spirit when y'all be catching the Holy Ghost y'all think that's not possession that's still a form of possession possession is not always a negative thing okay possession happens a lot in voodoo that is how the loi communicate with you unless they come to you in a dream but for the most part the loi don't just come to you like a fucking ghost they have to come through someone so when you have a voodoo ceremony um, or if they want to communicate or if they want to heal someone they have to come
come through someone and that's how they do it and I'm very sure when they were still serving their God a lot of these colonists and these slave masters were sitting there like oh my god what are these nigger hugger boos doing like what the fuck and they were like oh shit and they witnessed these things and they wrote them down in journals so I've come across a lot of things in my research a lot of times mommy Wata was with a lot of these slaves right mommy Wata was with a lot of migrants from across the sea and that's why a lot of water spirits are very very important to a lot of the people she never left them you know she never abandoned them as as with a lot of the loa she wasn't the only one of course but as with a lot of the loa a lot of the loa hold her very very important because she stayed with them through thick and thin she told them what to do and a lot of the loa also held the sea for them during certain revolts you know used the water or held it for them as a weapon towards the enemy i'm with king of the sea practically was the one that casted the enemies during the haitian revolution away you know if it wasn't for him who knows where we'd be right that's why when it comes to the water spirits a lot of them have lots i'm telling you lots of devotees you know it, it's more than just oh okay they bring me lots of wealth and abundance no they hold a very deep significance so of course because a lot of the dutch in particular who had kidnapped the black people and you know all these africans were very very confused and rightfully scared because a lot of the slaves weren't doing their work because mommy wata said so they outlawed dancing yes okay they were like um no y'all y'all can't be doing this nigga hug a boo shit in the 1770s they outlawed dancing that was related to the spirit i have no idea how they would know it was related to the spirit but i'm very sure there's like a specific type of way they danced and you know stuff like that so mommy wata wasn't happy with that so we all know how that probably didn't end well but anyhow so governor j nepavu n-e-p n-e-p-v-e-u nepavu nepavu i'm not dutch he said gotta read this again y'all the papa nago arada and other slaves who commonly are brought here under the name pira awudo Aldo, I, i'm sorry if i'm saying that wrong slaves have introduced certain devilish practices into their dancing which they have transposed to all other slaves when a certain rhythm is played they are possessed by their god which is generally called water mama you ignorant ignorant fool do people say that you're possessed when you get the holy spirit i think not motherfucker i just really can't stun the ignorance but moving on native americans also joined the colony and added water mama to their spirits also so by the 19th century there was a whole influx of Africans that had joined and they added water mama to the Serenam Winti religion but sadly after a while that lost traction and I don't believe she's that relevant in the religion as much anymore but water mama as you see had a lot a lot of relevance for a very very long time throughout history as I've said you see water mama throughout Africa throughout the Caribbean and in different names and she has different jobs throughout different types of nations and of course you'll see different images of her depending on where you go and who you're talking to and Trinidad and Tobago in particular they call her Mama Dlu, which is so interesting because I was like that it sounds very Haitian and um Haitian <laughs> I want to go to Trinidad so bad oh my god Trinidad uh, I need to go to Trinidad but anyways so what's interesting about Mama Dlu is a little bit more different than all of the the other I guess La Siren Mami Wata River Mama jobs I've ever heard of Mama Blow is the guardian of nature she punishes the overzealous hunters and people who basically attack nature people who are rigorously cutting down the trees and just like harming shit that they shouldn't in the forest so I was like that's that's interesting we need that in Haiti because that's why Haiti's climate is like that because people are always chopping on the fucking trees why, why couldn't we have that <laughs> Like, I'm just saying, I mean, I, no disrespect to you, last year. I'm just saying, like, what the hell? I was like, wait, what? Like I said, each, you know, mermaid or water spirit has their own thing in each country or region. And of course, you know, her lover or concert of sorts is Papa Boa. He is a nature spirit as well. So Mama Dlo is more so like nature, not really water. 
based but still water based but more so nature like mother nature for them and of course we all know about Lassie Ren I already did a video about Lassie Ren we have Iora um, which is more South American based very very interesting and then you know we go to Asia which um, a lot of the Asian situations are either man eater or bring you wealth and fortune <laughs> like you know so it, it's very very different now we move to Mami Wata's image okay most of the time Mami Wata is a snake and I could not for the life of me understand why Mami Wata is always a snake. Now we trace that back to the 19th century to a German lithograph of a female snake charmer that just blew up. That That's literally what happened. It blew up and it just it didn't stop circulating. It was in an Indian calendar. It circulated widely throughout Western Central Africa and people just kind of took the image and ran with it. You know, imagination did its course. I, now that I think about it, I don't think it really matters what Mami Wata looks like to be quite honest with you because for the most part when it comes to a lot of spirits especially water spirits um in african and even haitian um like voodoo like a lot of them are snakes anyway so more so making mami wata a snake is not too far off and once the image was established you know african sailors and things like that kind of just took it in and took the image with them as protection it wasn't necessarily a thing where they were like oh okay well you know they didn't think of the origin they just thought of okay well looks good to me <laughs> And they just took it with them. Now, of course, over the years, new images were adapted. People added different pieces. And every single image makes Mami Wata beautiful, okay? Mami Wata, La Siren, Shit Selkies. Nine times out of ten, if you're looking at a mermaid image, whether we're talking about European, Asian, Caribbean, African, any type of mermaid or situation of the sort is a beautiful rendition of a woman that that seduces men or women by the water. They are beautiful, they sing, they play an instrument, whatever the case may be. That is almost always the correct version, right? And you guys are probably wondering, okay, if they're so beautiful, how can they be so dangerous? Now, this is mainly because of their characteristics, okay? Anything that could bring you wealth, health, beauty, and power cannot all be rainbows and butterflies. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Nine times out of 10, if you are going to be approached by Mami Wata, you're going to have to do what Mami Wata wants, okay? You're going to have to be a loyal and faithful practitioner, or you're going to have to be born under her will, okay? Now, most of the time, Mami Wata is very, very nice, um, from what I've been told, okay? Now, let me just tell you, most of my information comes from Nigerians. Most of my, most of my information comes from Nigerians, um, and I'm also Haitian. So, I will say, I've always heard mostly good stories and any of the bad stories I've heard have been from people doing fuck shit. I'm, I'm just gonna say that right now. Comment down below if you know anything different. Now we're gonna get into the worshipping part, right? We're gonna get into the worshipping part of Mami Wata. We're gonna get into how most people get into the whole Mami Wata situation. Now Mami Wata devotees are extremely loyal. It's a very individualistic process. Most Mami Wata people don't necessarily congregate together but if they do, it's a big lavish affair. They wear red and white most of the time to distinguish both of her sides. Now, in Igbo culture specifically, red represents death, destruction, masculine energy, physicality, heat, of course, and power. While white is more feminine, can also signify death, signifies beauty, wealth, creation, new life, spirituality, translucency, water, and balance. And many times, Sometimes devotees wear like a white cloth wrapped around their waist. It's a lot. And of course, like I said, the red and white symbolize her nature. Same thing in Haitian culture. The colors are different, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. When it comes to the colors, y'all, after I make the videos, I forget. The colors are a lot. Bless me. Bless my heart. I don't got time to be remembering the colors all the time. But when it comes to the whole situation of hot and cold, red and, and blues, and yeah, listen, the whole situation of the temperament, that's kind of the same across the board, okay? La Siren is the same. Either you get the Gilles Rouge, as the Haitians like to call it, 
angry, fiery, red hot, lassie ren, mad as shit, will rip your head off and kill you in the blink of an eye. Or you get the soft, nice, beautiful, enchanting, will bless your soul type of lassie ren. It's the same situation with Mami Wata. Now, the one that you get depends on your luck, depends on your fate, depends on how you treat her, depends on what you do. It depends on a lot of different things. There's been so many stories of people getting kidnapped and being bought back without a hitch. And there's been so many people, that, and then there's been so many stories of people getting kidnapped and brought back in numerous pieces. So it, it really does depend. Now, of course, when it comes to people devoting their lives to her, there's some people that are just born with that fate. They just born to La Siren. They just born to Agua. They're born to Simbi. They're just born to the water spirits. And there's not much they can do about it. Um, That's for another video for another day of like how a loa picks you and stuff like that. I have to get more information on that. Um, again, that's a whole nother video for another day. But that's how a lot of them really get their devotees. I don't want to say dumb enough to make deals with loa about their lineage. But some people make deals that they ask can't catch. And then their lineage just stuck to a loa. That's the best way to... to explain it but some people um are just destined by birth to serve loa and then there's some situations where you know later on you're picked or you're just destined to do certain things that align with the loa's goals or whatever the case may be so in the case of mami wata her devotees usually do have very very lavish ceremonies for her and of course you know you have to bring offerings and most of her offerings include very very nice perfumes that smell really nice and sweet white offerings expensive jewelry jewelry, pomades, powders, incense, so I've heard Coca-Cola. Interesting shit. Shit's not good for your insides, Mami Wata, but do you? She likes really good food and a really good drink. Alcohol, of course, because what Orisha or Loa doesn't like alcohol. Her ceremonies are very lavish and loud and it's an affair. There's guitars, there's harmonicas, like chat. People love their Mami Wata. <laughs> okay, they sing to her and all of that. And then, of course, she comes through and possesses someone and says what they have to say or if someone needs to be healed they are healed now the thing about that we're going to get into that now and this almost always happens because if someone needs to be healed they could only be healed by mommy wata and um, you guys probably thinking what do you mean well this is because mommy wata if she makes someone sick can't no one heal them but mommy wata and this is because when it comes to orishas or loa or anything of the sort if they want you to do something Thing, you're going to do it and until you agree to do it or you do it on your own free will bad things are gonna happen to you if you're Nigerian like a true Nigerian for real for real you already know the deal even if you're Haitian Caribbean anything like that you already know the deal when it comes to the Loa the Odorishas or anything like that that's just how they operate they want what they want they get what they get and ain't nobody gonna tell them otherwise if you are not aware let me tell you how this shit goes when it comes to Mami Wata Mami Wata is such a prevalent spirit that she has taken responsibility for making people sick, making people barren, literally causing people so much harm, and she don't really give a fuck. <laughs> Like, if you can't have a kid, nine times out of ten, it's because of Mami Wata. To the point where, like, if you couldn't have a kid and, like, all of a sudden you have a kid, people sometimes will be like, oh my god, thank god, and thank Mami Wata. That's serious. Like, it, it's sometimes, like, people who practice, as soon as you have a kid, you're further away from wealth because it's thought that Mami Wata is barren herself and she doesn't have any kids and she's the one that grants people kids. People come to her to have children. If you're really, really sick, I don't know and no one can't figure out why you sick. It's because of mommy Wata. Okay, like it, it, it's that serious. Okay, mommy Wata has taken responsibility for doing so many things. You're supposed to serve her or she's trying to warn you. You're not paying attention. It's something. She's a very interesting spirit. Now, a lot of you guys may think, okay, maybe someone just has fibroids and that's why they can't have kids. Maybe someone, you know, is just having a really, really severe form of cancer. I mean, it is Africa, Ivana. They don't have modern day medicine. Nah, bruh. Some things just can't be explained. I'm talking about like legit sicknesses, okay? Mommy Wata, she be fucking niggas up. And she's the only one that can cure them. And most of the time after people go to these ceremonies or whatever, they're perfectly fine. Nothing's wrong with them. People serve her mainly because one, they ain't trying to get fucked up. <laughs> and two, people understand that she's the only one that could help them in dire crisis. When it comes to men, there's also been lots of men who have served Mami Wata. They've had the whole scenario where like they haven't wanted to serve her. They've done some fuck shit and their wives couldn't have kids. So Mami Wata, because either they fucked up with Mami Wata, they didn't do something that Mami Wata wanted and Mami Wata 
drop their wives. Baron, same thing has happened with Lassie Ren in the Haitian community. Like, listen, y'all, y'all don't want to be fucking with these things, bro. If the law wants something, they're going to get it. That's all I got to say. If they want it, they get it. This is so serious that devotees have photos of Mami Wata with babies on their shrines. So they not fucked over. Devotions to water spirits can enrich your life or ruin your life, but most of the time enrich your life. Nothing really bad happens to you unless you do some fuck shit or you don't do as you're told. Nonetheless, water spirits have genuinely helped the black people as a whole throughout their entire journey through colonization, slavery, all of that. It's very, very interesting to look through the history and see how a lot of these spirits have helped Haitians especially beat the France, beat the English, beat the Spain, wait, beat the Spain, beat the Spaniards and conquer Haiti as a free land, and of course helped other African slaves fight for their own freedom. It's very disheartening how now people look at voodoo and other folk religions and say that it's demonic or whatever case may be, not understanding the full context of how powerful these religions are and how people demonize them based on not understanding what exactly they're looking at. Waters of very 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 powerful force water is what divides all of us at the end of the day water is what brought these slaves to all these different lands our ancestors were all slaves and these spirits stuck with them throughout and led them to better decisions that helped us get to where we are today to be able to make the free decisions that we are able to make today even though a lot of us still feel enslaved we are way more free than we are today than our ancestors were yesterday and and I feel like we do need to acknowledge that. We do need to tell their stories. We do need to use some discretion when using the whole term of enslaved and not free. Because I feel like that is insanely disrespectful to our ancestors now that I think about it. Because a lot of us, we sit here and we're like, oh, we're not free. We're still enslaved. And I'm like, ooh, child. Now that I look at it, maybe we shouldn't be saying shit like that. I still have the right to do a lot of things that my ancestors couldn't fucking do. Right? Um, I still have the, you know, the voice. To, to, to say things and tell my ancestors stories. I still have the ability to practice what I want to practice and preach what I want to preach without literally um, being killed. And I think that's very, very important. I'm still able to share things with you guys. You guys are able to do your own research on whatever it is that I say. Um, of course, with that being said, everything that you need is linked down below. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you guys love Mami Watara more than you did before you click on this video, definitely check out my video on La Sirene and all my other mermaid videos because you guys love those videos so very much. Hope you guys learned something new. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Check out my other two channels. Get your merchandise. And I'm going to see y'all next time. Bye!